Okay, so when you look at your uh, folder here, student folder, you will find that in your lecture notes there is a. Uh, so we have a, a sheet called session outline, where I'll try to just list out all the topics that this is a very rough kind of sheet where we list out the topic um, yeah like this one okay uh, what are the topics we are discussing on a particular day that will help you to keep track of things okay so we can reduce this all right so the course structure has already been covered groups uh, so what you guys do is make sure that uh, we have another class tomorrow in the third period right by tomorrow third period we should have uh, identified all the group leaders and at least one person from every group should be present in the class so that I'll just ask you one by one who are the group leaders and you tell me and then we'll just note down I'll just quickly note down the names of the, uh, the students okay uh, so that you can just arrange your I, I'll do it myself so just be ready with the information who is the group leader and who is in the group okay so let's look at the total number of students okay so we have uh, at the moment officially we have 37 students plus we have six more okay so we are looking at 43 so we should not have more than uh, say uh, nine let's say nine groups so have anywhere between like four to five per group okay we should have some number of groups so we should have about nine ten groups so let's have four to five per group not more than five per group is that okay all right so try to work that out and don't have disproportionate numbers six if we have six okay six okay fine six is fine okay so let's have anywhere between four to six per group okay all right okay all right so um where are we so they are groups so make sure that your groups are ready tomorrow okay the information should be ready tomorrow all right so uh, can we put can we switch is it cooler now can you see the sound i'm finding the sound very disturbing okay uh, so uh, the the other point now now we get on to the substantive part of the course so what you have to do is uh, so, so the broad introduction, all of you guys have taken finance. Okay, the first thing I want to make clear is that it's not my job to make finance interesting to you. You should already be interested in finance. Okay, finance is a very, uh, it's a very, uh, very vast uh, topic. Okay, uh, very vast field to be covered, and multiple topics have to be covered. And usually, we don't have the time to cover even what I would like to cover in a second year uh, program and an MBA program. Okay, so we have a, uh, we have tremendous time pressure. We have many, many concepts to be covered. So you have to understand. So studying finance is a little bit like studying physics. You have to understand. Uh, I mean, I see it more as a conceptual subject than a mathematical subject it's much more conceptual and logical very much like law okay so you can't just mindlessly use mathematics unless you understand the concept per se all right like you have to understand in law you have to understand the difference between a contract and an agreement okay there's a technical difference which you have to understand and in a way you have to memorize it okay so similarly in finance you'll have to cover multiple concepts you'll have to do a lot of work so the natural interest in financial markets and finance should be there from your side okay i can't make uh, generate interest uh, it's not my job to generate interest because if i try to do that it will slow me down and we won't be able to cover so many concepts okay we assume that you're interested in finance and therefore you're willing to put in a lot of effort and i will direct you as to how you should put in that effort okay is that clear to everyone okay you're supposed to be interested in finance i'm here my job is to make sure that i design a good syllabus okay which helps us to meet the long-term and short-term objectives of the program which we will discuss shortly what are the long-term and short-term objectives so my job is to design a good curriculum which trains you as uh, MBA finance students okay and my job is to explain the concepts clearly and if you don't understand to explain it 15 16 times that's my job it's not my job to make finance interesting to you by you know coming out with bells and whistles and games and you know uh, all kinds of stuff so uh, you have to focus on you have to understand that as finance students there are certain concepts that you have to master okay there's a range of concepts that you have to master and i will go through those concepts one by one and you have to make sure as we cover each concept that you understand what is being taught if you don't understand ask a question because everything builds on the previous material so if you haven't understood the material earlier on you will not be able to answer, uh, understand the material that follows okay yeah yes ma'am is calling okay yeah these fans are so loud 
Yeah, Narita. Yeah, is, is the AC on in the class in 101? You know, I think that's what the students are saying that that's uh, okay. All right, so as part of that exercise, okay, uh, we assume that you are all very interested in finance, okay, so you will be able to, you'll be willing to put in the effort that is required to master the area, uh, uh, to master the area, okay, and come out as impressive finance students. So, one of the things you should start, and this is again outside the scope of the course, but this is the work that I'm giving you. So, you should start some, com start tracking some companies, okay. So, what do I mean by that? Essentially, just identify a few companies. Uh, let's look at uh, something like this let me just take and everything by and large every link that I use I'll try to uh, put here all right so again this sheet is meant to be only for uh, your and my reference so it doesn't have to look pretty it just has to get the job done okay you understand this is supposed to make sense only to people who have attended the class okay so this is a reasonably useful website you have some paid features but the free features are also quite good Let's try and understand this. All right, so you can see this uh, map. This is called a heat map. Again, learning terminology. This is the first term that you're learning almost in finance. So we have to, as, as MBA finance students, we have to be able to use what some people would uh, refer to as jargon, but it's still important to know that because these are the terms that people in the industry use. So this is called a heat map. Essentially what it's trying to show you is give you a visual picture of what happened in the stock market. So this green stuff means that J and J, this was up actually on the day. All right. So it's a one day performance here. You can change it to six month, one year performance, whatever it is, but it means essentially this is in green. So that means J and J was up. Okay. And uh, Google was down, Facebook, Microsoft, everybody was down. So that's in red. And you have different shades of red to show how far down they were. Okay. So this kind of a display is called a heat map. You can have it for the Indian stock market as well. Okay. And so uh, one of the things you have, you have, to, you should do is identify about uh, you know anywhere between say uh, five to six companies which you are going to track now. And this is going to be an effort for you. Uh, throughout the year until the time that you get placed and even hopefully after that okay so this is a continuing project outside the scope of the curriculum okay so what you do is identify identify companies and let's say if you identify Amazon okay you can identify I would uh, recommend maybe take two or three Indian companies and take two or three US companies okay the US companies are very important because the US is by far the largest economy in the world okay uh, so it's about 20 trillion GDP it's the most important economy in the world and it will remain so for the foreseeable future okay so uh, all this talk that you hear of India and China overtaking the US is total garbage people who say this have no understanding of what the US economy is and what China and India are I mean there's just no chance of that happening in your lifetime forget about even my lifetime okay so make sure you understand the US economy and following the US economy in detail will give you a very good understanding of what a developed economy looks like okay so this is the most developed economy that we have in the world the most developed capital markets okay deep liquid financial markets in the US so you will get the get an idea of what are the features of such an uh, of such a market and many other things that you have in the US today are stuff that might come to India five ten years down the line okay if we have the vision for it actually we can bring all the stuff to India to right right away it's just a mindset problem people in, in this country are all socialists whether it's BJP Congress everybody the socialist so they don't have a vision of what free markets can do for an economy and that's why we have all these really stupid economic policies and that's why this country is not achieving its potential we can actually do this overnight and we can really become uh, uh, an economic superpower all it takes is a mindset change trusting free markets and coming up with free market policies but we don't have the vision to do that so anyway so as i said uh, so don't so get out of this mindset of most of these people and uh, most mba programs in this country are run from an indian market perspective i think that's a wrong perspective the correct perspective is a global perspective okay so you should always have a global perspective and india becomes you have to have in-depth knowledge of india because most of you will get your first jobs in india right so therefore it's important to understand the indian market but the first perspective should be a global perspective understand the global economy and as part of that you should understand the u.s economy because it's the most important economy in the world okay so you can see why 
uh, Donald Trump is able to flex so much muscle with the Chinese because the US market is the most lucrative market in the world. 20 trillion economy and about 60 to 70, about 65 to 70 percent of that 20 trillion is consumer spending. So if you give a manufacturer of consumer goods, okay, an option, you tell him that you can manufacture in only one economy in the world. He will choose, or if you, if you can sell into only one economy in the world, which one will you choose? Everybody will close their eyes and choose the US because it's the most lucrative consumer market in the world. Okay, so that's why they're able to flex so much muscle because it's, it's such a lucrative consumer market, everybody wants to be there. Okay, so follow a few US companies and preferably follow the big companies. Don't really like select some small time company, select big companies like Amazon, Google, Facebook. Okay, because these companies have a very large footprint okay so you as you follow these companies you will get to know all the you will get a very good window on what's happening in the global economy all right so so select a few companies it doesn't matter if everybody in the batch selects the same three companies because every person will follow them differently right so when you follow companies what that means is then you set up suppose you're following amazon okay so then you set up everyone knows how to set up a news alert you know how to set up a news alert you don't know how to set up a news alert you just go to Google and Google for Amazon and then one of the things that comes up is news remember okay let's do it now it's gone to Amazon okay so this is Amazon the ticker for Amazon okay so you can actually go anywhere and get news but actually what you should do is um, yeah so uh, why don't you understand this now I've, I've done a query for Amazon now one of the options is news okay so I just click on news all right so now you get all the news on Amazon so this is what it means to track a company identify your list of five you don't have to have even six companies even four to five companies is fine but once in the, what is important is the process okay once you selected a company like Amazon let's say and, and you repeat this process for every company so you select news and then you go to uh, the end create alert okay so you create an alert for Amazon okay now this news alert will come once you I think it will come to your email you can set it up to come to your email all right so uh, you'll get an alert all right you can set up the frequency and deliver to I can choose to deliver to my email okay or you can set up an RSS feed if you just want to go to your browser and look at it okay everyone knows RSS feeds okay all right so now you set an alert so which means that essentially what is happening is every day you are getting all this information on Amazon like whatever stuff has come out okay so uh, all this stuff now you see one of the important factors of Amazon how to look at a company we'll have a discussion on this okay so one of the important features of Amazon is you've heard of Amazon AWS have you heard of AWS Amazon Web Services. Amazon Web Services. I'm finding this no noise very. What's the feeling now on the AC, Simran? Is it coming? Is it okay now? Can we reduce the fan, guys? Can we try for a while? Because it's very disturbing. Is it better now? Is it okay? Let's try it for a while. If you feel really uncomfortable, then we'll. Okay, so one of the important features of Amazon is, as I said, that's why you want to follow large companies like Amazon, Google, Facebook, because uh, these guys have a massive footprint. So Amazon has many types, of, many types of businesses. One of the important businesses of Amazon is AWS, Amazon Web Services. Okay, essentially they host all kinds of web uh, services for everybody. Even Netflix is a very interesting company because Netflix in many ways competes with Amazon, right? because they're showing movies streaming movies so you don't might may not buy the dvd on amazon right but netflix runs completely on aws so the entire netflix infrastructure is running on amazon web services okay so uh, this is a very interesting relationship when you look at it from a strategy point of view as well operation strategy etc so uh, so aws is a very big component of amazon so you'll get to understand the businesses as well and so now you can see here jeffries is an investment bank okay so bearish jeffries means that they feel that the uh, the prospects for microsoft's 
uh, Azure Cloud, this Microsoft Azure Cloud is the competitor to AWS. So Microsoft also has a cloud business. So there's this whole shift going on in the industry, uh, in the global economy towards cloud-based uh, services, okay, web-based services. So uh, there's a massive shift happening, okay. And so the big players in that uh, in that space are the biggest is AWS. Then uh, another very uh, you know competitive player is uh, Microsoft, okay, Azure. And so Satya Nadella used to head the cloud division before he became the CEO, okay. So uh, so Microsoft's uh, competing product is the Azure Cloud business, okay. And then you have Google as well as another major player in, in cloud, okay, in cloud computing. So these are the major players. So what Jeffries is saying here is that uh, the Microsoft Azure cloud business is no uh, is, is not a um, is no AWS which means it's not good enough to take on AWS okay and beat AWS so this is a news report by a particular investment bank so you would get all kinds of news like this and so as you read all these uh, news stories you'll understand uh, more and more about how the business works and then you should also follow uh, set up a ticker like this there are many ways to follow Amazon actually one is this one I'm putting in the ticker here so this one if you, you need to set up a login for yourself okay it's a charting system it's a very good charting system especially for intraday charts short-term charts um, okay uh, yeah it's very good for short-term charts because you can pretty much track every company in the world in this okay so if you want to track an Indian company like say Maruti you can get a, a chart of Maruti here so you can see Maruti Suzuki NSE charts and you get intraday charts which are essentially short term this is very good for intraday charts because you can get a lot of data something with let's reload this site okay so the other so the other thing that you have the very important one very important aspect of tracking a company is following the how the stock price is moving okay so you'll have to follow how the stock price is moving if you get a chance you can follow even the bond prices but uh, at least follow stock prices so for instance uh, here you can get Maruti as well you should be able to get it okay yeah you can see that this chart uh, this site is very good because it gives you uh, you know short term intraday charts like one hour 30 minutes five minutes so it's very good for following the price action okay so here in this case what you would do is amzn so are you guys following what i'm showing you okay so amazon you can see this now this is you can set up uh, this this particular charting application is very good for intraday charts so i would suggest that you follow this when you want to see very short term price action okay uh, we'll get into the details of charts later on but otherwise what i would recommend is uh, is charts like yahoo finance which is very good for uh, these guys are showing you what are they showing you here first Yahoo Finance is a very good website for yeah this one this is the right w way to look at uh, charts actually uh, there are some display problems nowadays but still this is a good uh, way to track charts okay so then later on you would just change the uh, so you go when you when you go to Yahoo Finance, you get a lot of very good financial information also on Yahoo Finance. Okay, so you can look at all these categories, statistics. Okay, profile, financials, PNL, balance sheet, all that information. Okay, and then you have the chart as well. So when you look at the chart, you can get a, a picture of how Amazon has been moving. There are certain display problems these days with uh, when you get longer to try to get maximum data. You can, you can see here five year movement for Amazon. Okay, so it's very important to follow the stock price movement as well and to understand how try to understand in your own way. This is very important. There's no fixed formula as such. You listen to I'll, I'll show you some sources that you listen to, but you need to understand the markets in your own way. 
you need to develop because this is not science okay this is not physics or chemistry where there's a fixed set of rules and it always works okay so here no matter what you hear in the in, uh, you'll hear a lot of people talking about uh, you have all these buzzwords like financial modeling and this and that but these are all basically they're very dishonest uh, you know uh, efforts because finance and economics is not something where uh, modeling really works in any meaningful way at all okay because there's no track record of uh, performance so these things are just you need to know how to use them you need to know how to build these models etc how they work but they're not really as useful as they are in say hard sciences okay so uh, so therefore it's what is very important in finance and economics is to develop your own feel for the market okay it's think of it as like you, you understand surfing you know windsurfing like you get on the waves you take a surfboard and you get on the waves right so you have to look at understanding uh, market movements even even the economy even economic variables okay you have to think of understanding market movements uh, like a surfer understands the waves right like a surfer do you think a surfer needs to have a phd in fluid mechanics does a surfer need a phd in fluid mechanics no need right you can have very good surfers who just all they have is a feel for the waves they've been going out every day and just riding the waves uh, you know swallowing water and then keep uh, keep coming back and eventually you get a feel for the waves you can see that a wave you can almost feel that a wave is coming okay and that's how you you become a champion surfer so in that same way i would encourage you to uh, develop that kind of feel for the market okay follow the chart regularly follow the news eventually as you start doing it initially it may not make sense to you you may find yourself feeling overwhelmed like i'm not able to follow what's going on there's too much stuff coming at me but do not give up okay obviously uh, initially it will feel uh, difficult because it's a new thing and it's quite complex but as you keep on doing it every day your brain starts getting used to it and then it starts to make sense of things in your own unique way okay now this is very important to understand i'm repeating this again and again in your own unique way because that's the right way to look at uh, especially a subject like finance and economics you have to understand things in your own way okay that's another reason why it's very important to ask questions because if you don't ask you know, the reason that people ask questions most of the time is that they want to make sense of what i'm saying in their own way which is the only way you can learn right that's why it's so important to come to class because uh, technically you don't need to come to class because there's a video of the entire class the reason you come to understand this also for yourself the reason you come to class is for the privilege of asking questions because by watching the video you can't ask questions right so so are, are you following what i'm trying to get, uh, say here okay so develop a feel for the market so you re, you know that the jeffries has put out this note on uh, how azure the azure cloud is not as good as aws etc and there's all kinds of other news that will come out okay so try to see how news affects the markets okay most important types of news will be like when you see here when you follow a company you'll have uh, is uh, okay if you look at uh, summary there will be quarterly earnings releases it's very important to follow the earnings release okay so what you're going to do is quarterly earnings release there will be a, pre, uh, a discussion in the market before that okay before the release comes out in the summary normally you can see this information okay you can see here here look at this earnings date so somewhere between July 24th to July 29th is the next earnings date for Amazon. Okay, so somewhere in that week the earnings will come out. Okay, there are other sites where you can get the exact earnings date. I'll I'll put in those links. But essentially, you know, this is pro approximately the time that earnings will come out. So when the earnings the earnings comes out, uh, the earnings release comes out, you should try to follow what's being discussed. Like if you go to a website, like uh, if you go to a, if you go to YouTube Bloomberg. Okay, if you go to Bloomberg Live, you'll see uh, as I've shown you guys here. Uh, let's start. A, okay, let's do it here. I will put in another. Uh, I'll put a link to another. Uh, I think I sent you guys. Remember, sometime about a couple of months back, I sent you a link to a, a, a video that I prepared, uh, which is a, in, uh, I mean, the, a background for finance students, MBA students in finance, right? So watch that video once again, that tells you all the stuff that you have to follow. So in that, there's a link to Bloomberg, I mean, I've discussed Bloomberg Live as well. So if you go to Bloomberg Live, you see 24 seven uh, transmission of the Bloomberg feed, okay? That's very good, especially in US, US market hours, you will see discussion of all these company earnings which are coming out, okay? So in the immediate aftermath of say, uh, Amazon earnings, 
you can go and listen to Bloomberg Live. You'll see that they'll be discussing Amazon earnings. They will get various uh, analysts. Like this guy is an analyst. Say this guy, Gene Munster from Loop Ventures. He's also an analyst. He focuses mainly on, um, I think, Google and Apple and uh, companies like that. So uh, he's mainly, a, I think, an Apple and uh, is an Apple specialist. But anyway, so uh, you have all these analysts, and as these analysts discuss the company and their results and things like that, you will get a feel for how uh, the market looks at companies. Okay, what are the factors that a market considers important when discussing a company's prospect? You'll see. So as you do this on a regular basis for a few selected companies, okay, uh, month after month, quarter after quarter, you will develop a very good feel for how uh, uh, you know the market perceives a company, how prices move, and then you'll make your own sense of uh, you'll make your uh, develop your own views about how the market is going to move. Are you following? Okay. All right. So this is what you have to do. You have to follow the news. If you can make the time, you will find also that uh, you can just do a Google for uh, Amazon earnings call. There will be there's something called an earnings call, okay, which is after the release of earnings. Okay, so you should understand all this stuff. Again, this is also part of the finance jargon. Earnings call means, uh, I think it's listed here itself. You'll find the link to the earnings call. Uh, look for it. Earnings call means uh, the after the release of earnings, the CFO, the top management team, CEO, CFO, and you know maybe some other important managerial personnel will discuss the company's earnings. Okay, they will discuss uh, future outlook for outlook for future quarters and things like that with a team of analysts so you got a whole bunch of people who are usually invited to an earnings conference call but the video the audio will be posted okay of the earnings conference call if you go to the amazon website i think they there also you can find the earnings call okay uh, because that's an official event so the company top management does a conference with uh, leading analysts around the industry who are following that company and the comp the analysts are going to ask them about all these kinds of questions they're going to ask them about what is the competitive threat for uh, amazon a aws from uh, microsoft's azure cloud what are you doing to make sure that you can remain ahead and think you, you understand what i'm saying these kinds of questions okay they're going to ask the company all these difficult questions and then the company management will respond so again if you this is a second level uh, analysis if you this may take some, a lot of time so if you don't have the time maybe you can skip the earnings call okay uh, but if you have the time if you really want to get into the depth of it you should actually be listening to the earnings call as well because the objective of this entire process is that at the end of it when you're doing when you're doing this uh, for a few select companies if you do this month after month once you've done done this you will get a very good understanding of how to analyze a company okay and you'll get very in-depth understanding of that particular company as well which will also be very useful in your interviews one you, one of the things you can do is as soon as you get an opening in your interview okay uh, you should try to squeeze in the fact uh, let them know that you have been following these major companies okay so and then they'll ask you okay tell us about amazon what have you learned what have you learned about amazon okay or what have you learned about uh, tata motors okay so uh, then you can show them the depth of your understanding of this company okay so that is very important so depth of analysis is very important because at the end of the day you'll be working in specialist jobs okay so you must have in-depth understanding and by doing this kind of analysis you will get a very good idea of how to do in-depth analysis of, of a company all right okay so we are talking about so this is all stuff that we discuss as fundamental and now one of the things you'll have to do is uh, one of the things I would recommend that you do is let's keep let's look at the chart now okay now as you look at the chart let's look at a daily chart just to now this is the technical part so far we've been talking mainly about what we call fundamental analysis that is we are concerned with earnings economic growth market share okay all these uh, profitability ratios this and that company financials uh, these are all what we call fundamental analysis sectoral growth now we are talking about what is called technical analysis and technicals we'll discuss this de uh, distinction in great detail later on but broadly technicals is all about nothing to i'm not concerned with all these fundamentals market share financial statement debt equity ratio i don't care about all this stuff all i care about is the price movement okay and i care about certain other things like volume and uh, open interest and stuff all the stuff that is generated by mark all the information that is generated by market activity 
okay so price information okay where it opens where it closes okay and volume traded and open interest number of contracts outstanding etc so this is all market generated activity uh, market activity uh, generated information and that's all i care about as a technical analyst so this is also an important perspective uh, and so what you should do there is as i said part of your uh, own fee uh, distinctive analysis of any company when you look at the chart of amazon you should start taking views on the market which means you should start start predicting in your own mind okay uh, as to how is this because remember one of the important questions obviously for everybody is which way is this going right so first question is should i buy amazon or should i sell it okay and then should i if i should buy it should i buy it right now or should i wait am i going to get a better price okay so therefore uh, these are very important questions uh, real life problems that you will have decision problems so you should start already start uh, you know practicing that in your mind so suppose you take look at uh, take a look at this and you decide that you should buy amazon okay so then and let's simplify matters by assuming that you are going to buy it immediately at the market okay so which means now 18 1880 let's say at 1880 you buy amazon okay because you think the stock price is going a lot higher all right so uh, you could be uh, your uh, your decision that market your your assessment that amazon is going a lot higher can be based on both fundamentals and technicals or it could be based only on fundamentals or only on technicals okay those are decision that you take for yourself but at the bottom line is at the end of the day you need to have a view this is called having a view again market jargon okay do you have a view on amazon which means do you have some clarity as to which way you want to go do you want to be a buyer or do you want to be a seller that's called having a view if you are not sure then you say i don't really have a view okay so now what you should also practice is okay this is this you taking a view practice taking a view because at the end of the day when you are on the spot in the real world you will have to take a view okay which is why you will find that the entire set of finance electives which i have designed is heavily focused on financial markets because pretty much every role that you take uh, that is available to an mba in finance in the industry in finance is every role is going to require you to take a view on the markets every 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 role you look at eventually uh, you will have to take a view on uh, most of your job is going to involve taking a view on the market is this uh, are interest rates going up or down is the stock price going up or down okay is the oil price going up or down and then based on that view you will have to take a decision and then that decision could end up being right or wrong and there's no guarantee okay unlike if you, again i want to make the distinction once again between finance and economics and things like uh, you know engineering and finance engineering we know that if we design a pl- aircraft with the right specifications if everything is okay no parts are faulty that aircraft is bound to fly because the laws of physics don't change okay so if you don't have any uh, you know unforeseen event like clear air turbulence or whatever that aircraft we can actually predict how that aircraft will fly okay so the only reason you have accidents in things like the one of the tesla rockets not sorry not tesla but spacex rockets one of the spacex rockets uh, went up in flames why they discovered eventually because one of the parts was faulty okay so if the part is faulty obviously that's not a fault of the modeling the modeling works perfectly but obviously if you have a faulty part then the thing won't work right so in physics and uh, science and engineering etc uh, the modeling really works because you can do it repeatedly you know it's guaranteed to work okay unless there's a problem in somewhere in your faulty parts or something so this is not the case in finance and economics you cannot there's no real method for predicting uh, market prices or economic variables you'll see that even the imf and the world bank are repeatedly revising their forecasts for the world economy right uh, and uh, they're having to change their forecast because you can't really predict okay and that is actually the nature of the uh, of the of the beast okay that is the nature of economics and uh, and uh, economic activity which is the focus of financial markets so it should not surprise anybody but unfortunately in the finance industry and especially in finance academia and economics ac- academia there is a denial of this uh, reality okay which is why you see people try to push all these models and stuff which which can actually predict 
So we will learn about these models. We will learn about the theoretical structure of these models, okay, the foundations. But you should have a healthy skepticism for these models because this is not finance. Uh, this is not science and engineering, okay. So these models have literally zero credibility, okay. I mean they have zero performance uh, record. So therefore uh, we should be very very skeptical. But we should know how to construct these models, all right? Okay. So. Uh, taking a view, you will have to take a view eventually when you get on the spot in industry. Taking a view, practice taking a view, it doesn't matter if you're wrong. Okay, practice taking a view, uh, but obviously the goal is in the long run you have to be right, more right than wrong. So let's say I take a view, I look at this chart and I feel based on my uh, fundamental analysis also, I feel this stuff is going a lot higher. Okay, so then I want to buy it obviously, so I buy it at 1880. Now, the second thing you should do when you take a view is also decide now this is a more of a technical uh, analysis perspective than a fundamental perspective but still you must take to, this is where the discipline comes in in your uh, risk management when you take a view you must also decide or identify a point on the chart below which or above which your view is wrong okay so let me explain what i mean here in this particular case when i take a view that okay i take a view that this is very very bullish it's going a lot higher so i want to buy it and i decide for the sake of simplicity i'm buying it right away at 1880 but i also decide i also take a view at part of my view formation i also say that this particular price point here okay we can see it a little better if we zoom it out so this point here around this low say 1620 1673 are you following what i'm saying this particular low point here as i position the cursor so it's around 1673 if you want to read the actual thing you can just go to yahoo finance it's easier to read you can read it here also okay so i say that 1673 okay i'm buying it at 1880 but if the market goes because remember it's uncertain it can either go up or down so after you buy it, it can two things can happen. Either it stays there, which never really happens in the long run. It moves around. So either it goes up, we simplify the scenarios. After you buy it, either it goes up or it goes down. So if it goes up, good for you, okay? But if it goes down, you need to have a, what is called a contingency plan, okay? This is the risk management aspect of it, okay? So you should also, while you take a view, you should also uh, decide, the, uh, identify the point on the chart below which your view is wrong or above which your view is wrong okay in this case i'm buying so i say that if the market goes below 1673 then my view is wrong and then i should exit my position okay because my position is taken uh, my long I, I buy amazon okay because why because i feel it's going a lot higher right so if it goes in my favor good but if it starts dropping from 1880 all right it keeps on dropping and starts going below 1673 i say that uh now it's dropped too far it should not have dropped if i was right if my view was right that amazon was supposed to go a lot higher then it should not have dropped below 1673 okay so therefore at six below once it drops below 1673 i my view is i accept that my view is wrong and therefore i should surrender my position you understand it's logical yeah so are you talking about stop loss yeah so this is the term that she's another jargon that she'll introduce okay that is this term is called a stop loss okay so this is uh, it's not a technical term but the technical term, term will be stop order okay we'll do it when we do order types but in loose terms what we call uh, what the market refers to this in this particular case what she's saying is my entry price was 1880 and my stop loss is 1673 okay i'll just yeah i'll move it from there are you following so this term is this level is called the stop loss level okay so when you are telling somebody of you if you watch uh, cnbc tv 18 uh, and other indian tv programs you'll find a lot of analysts come out and give their views on the stock and they will mention something called a stop loss which means that's the point beyond which they accept that their view is wrong so whatever position that you are taking on the basis of the view that position should be closed out okay it should be abundant closed out exited whatever you want to uh, expression you want to use are you following okay everyone is following so far okay so you'll notice that this is a very lecture mode uh, i'm giving you a lecture essentially non-stop okay you can obviously ask questions at any point of time but 
this is how uh, most of the course is going to go because we have to cover concepts right now i'm trying to teach you how to follow a company okay so it's going to be almost like a non-stop lecture mode uh, which is on paper it looks like we should not be doing that we should be using case method and stuff like that but case method is not really going to be efficient for what we have to achieve in finance because there's a whole bunch of concepts so it's more like studying physics okay so you don't study physics and mathematics with a case method so in mathematics also if you have to teach you uh, matrix multiplication i don't teach you that through a case method i just tell you that this is what a matrix is these are the parts these are the rows and columns and this is how you multiply matrices and then if you don't understand we uh, rehash it multiple times until you understand it okay so this is the right way i feel to study this kind of material because there's a vast amount of material that we have to cover and these are all concepts okay you have to understand these concepts and so the lecture method is going to be the best way to cover it according to me okay we will have some case discussions also okay uh little case lets and little problems that we will do we will use some of those but there's going to be a heavy element of lecturing so uh, please make sure you don't get put off by that okay that's why i said that it's not my job to make finance interesting to you my job is to uh, design the curriculum and to explain all the concepts clearly obviously if you don't understand the concept i'll explain it 20 30 times as many times as you need you can also come in later and discuss it with me in the office etc okay everyone is following okay all right so please don't tune off if you have uh, if uh, just because it's a lecture method and you've been told that you know, <laughs> we should be using uh, uh, we should not be using a lecture method uh, so anyway th this is the right way to uh, i feel to cover this kind of material so this is a stop loss so when you take very important exercise again part of your own becoming a good surfer is take a view also take a view which means decide whether you want to buy or sell something practice taking a view okay and you're not actually buying it or selling it with real money okay but you can actually keep a record for yourself okay if you want to keep a spreadsheet keep a record for yourself but also decide the stop point also just identify the point on the chart at which your view at which point your view is wrong okay so essentially what that does is it limits your risk on a particular investment okay on a particular trade so that you have okay here it's 1673 to 1880 so you don't lose more than that amount of money on this particular trade this is clear that is very important because remember what we said everything is uncertain there's no guarantees in this business okay so therefore uh, when you do something when you do a trade like a buy or a sell of anything you could lose on it so you have to have a system by which you limit the losses on any particular trade otherwise you could just go bankrupt on any on one trade right which happened to a lot of people there are a lot of uh, interesting case studies like the hunt brothers there are a couple of brothers who tried to corner the silver market in the 19 in the late 70s 80s so they bought up all the silver and they tried to buy up all the silver in the world and essentially they did amass a lot of uh, holdings of silver and eventually what happened was that there were no other buyers left so they had a massive stockpile of silver they drove up the price but eventually the price crashed and these guys went bankrupt okay so all kinds of stuff can happen you have to have a good system for managing your risk okay so following a company so far coming back to our topic following a company follow all the fundament, fundamental news about the company all right listen to uh, bloomberg tv and listen to cnbc tv 18 in india if you're for the indian companies that you're following listen to cnbc tv 18 for global news use bloomberg okay on the through the youtube feed use bloomberg because uh, cnbc and all should not be used for cnbc tv 18 in india should not be used for glo tracking global news okay so for global news use bloomberg and for american companies you can use bloomberg as a discussion there are lots of interesting discussions on cnbc also the u.s channel okay on companies all right so this is what it means to follow companies we've had a long discussion but hopefully you've learned something about how to follow a company so although this is very equity focused it's very equity focused but if you look at uh, here they don't give the debt equity ratio here but i think you'll get that in the profile so but also keep an eye on the debt especially if somebody decides to follow a company like tesla tesla is a very interesting company to follow because you'll find that in tesla in the case of tesla there is a very wide range of this a very uh, you know uh, wide range of views there are some people who believe that stock is worth like two thousand three thousand dollars there are some people who believe and there are many people who believe that uh, the stock is worthless okay 
So uh, there's a very uh, you know wide range of views. So it's very interesting, partly because the te the technology that they're dealing with is a new technology, and there's a lot of uncertainty in the market. That's why you get all these differing views. So uh, so Tesla, for instance, I was talking about the bond, uh, the death side of it. Now Tesla has is quite a leveraged company, all right, and it had recently. I think they just managed to pay off. They had a, a nine billion bond issue, a nine billion debt, uh, nine billion or I don't remember three billion or something. So essentially, they had a lot of debt repayment. So one of the things to worry about is companies that have debt. They have to repay that debt from time to time. So Tesla had a, uh, a bond that was maturing, uh, I think, in March 2019. And one of the concerns in the market was, will Tesla have enough cash flow to repay that bond? Okay, they had about one and a half billion or two billion or something of bondish uh, or, uh, of, or three billion bonds to be repaid. So market was concerned. The market was very concerned about whether they do to repay the bond. So this is also one of the types of questions that will come up when you are following a company. All right. So it's not, although it tends to be very heavily equity focused, okay, but don't lose sight of the debt picture as well. So you should have, when you look at a company, you should have a picture of their, uh, so you have all these, uh, do they have the debt equity? So you have the, so that I think you'll get in the statistics part of it, since you're not getting it in the, so you can study all this stuff. Yeah. So you can see all this valuation uh, stuff you'll see here in the, So you can get all this stuff like the debt equity ratio, etc. You can see how Amazon has about $69 billion worth of debt, right? So you can find out, so you should have an eye on the debt as well. And through, you can go through all the financials, try to understand. And here, try to repeat, because for many of you, when you go in for your, uh, your final placement, okay, so one of the companies that comes here is Care Ratings. Later on, maybe uh, other rating companies might also come. S&P also, some of you, some of your seniors have joined S&P. Okay, that's also a ratings company. Now, uh, one of the important, uh, and this, this is a core skill that you should have as a finance student anyway, and that is financial statement analysis. So in your accounting courses in the first year in your uh, FM1, okay, I don't know, maybe one or two, uh, you would have done financial statement analysis, ratio analysis, DuPont ratio analysis, remember? Okay, so make sure that you use all this stuff here that you can see all these, they have all these different kinds of profitability ratios, okay, operational effectivity, uh, effectiveness ratios, okay, uh, like asset turnover and things like that. So make sure your, your grasp of financial statement analysis is, uh, is top notch, okay. So remember, part of being a successful MBA student or as an outstanding MBA student is you have to put in a lot of work outside the range of your curriculum, okay. You can't just do your course curriculum and get decent grades and say, I am a, I am a star. No, you have to do it because you just don't have enough time through these courses to cover the vast amount of material that has to be covered and the level of expertise that you need to develop. You will not develop it if you only do the course curriculum. So on the side, you have to have all these things in your head as targets, as goals, okay, that I must be a master of financial statement analysis. So how do you become a master of that? You combine that with your uh, spreadsheet software skills, okay? So you keep on plugging all this data. You can export a lot of this data, plug all this data into a, uh, into a spreadsheet, okay? And then keep experimenting so you can re rehash your concepts as well, all your you know different uh, you know financial ratio concepts, ratio analysis, okay? And and also how you program that into a spreadsheet, okay? Understand how these ratios are changing. So make sure that you are very conversant because in these interviews they'll ask you about uh, financial statement analysis okay and one of the things that the care ratings uh, gentleman had mentioned when we brought him in for a curriculum review was that he wants to have uh, he wants to have the ideal candidate as somebody who can analyze a company from a holistic perspective not just the financial statements but also looking at the strategy of the company okay what are the various risks so a holistic perspective so if you actually do this exercise okay which is as i said outside curriculum activity extracurricular activity but it's very important but if you do this exercise following a few companies but follow them in a holistic from a holistic perspective follow all the news that comes out okay and see how the stock price is reacting see if they have any debt what are the debt in what is the interest rate on the debt okay follow all that and then do their uh, and analyze their financial statements see what their liquidity picture is 
see what their profitability picture is because there are many kinds of ratios liquidity ratios financial profitability ratios okay operational effectiveness ratios okay all these kinds of things so make sure you're a master of ratio analysis but it doesn't stop there you go into the whole strategy of the company okay and all the other kinds of risks that exist how the stock price has been moving what the management is saying on the earnings calls so if you have if you bring all this together you have a holistic view of a company okay and as i said the number of companies is not important even three or four is fine but what is more important is the process and the in-depth analysis comprehensive and in-depth okay so wide and deep are you following within a particular company is everyone getting the message okay puni you're tuned in okay all right so uh, so this is the this is the idea and you got to repeat this sec i think i pretty much covered everything that you need for a company so this news is very important the news basically gets you going so the news feed that i showed you how to set up uh, kaprania now you're clear how to set up a news feed okay so uh, you set up the news feed and the news feed will drive a lot of your analysis okay because that will set you thinking about and and you'll learn a lot also from the news feed okay so i think this pretty much covers it for this particular topic okay company tracking all right so now we can get into uh, and and as far as the cp uh, syllabus is concerned what this is essentially is everything that has been covered so far okay so if i do cp in the fourth session that means everything up to has that has been covered up to the third session is fair game i can ask you anything about whatever has been covered in the first three sessions okay is that clear so for today you didn't have any homework as such but from tonight you have homework because whatever has been covered in the first session it becomes your homework is that clear okay all right so let's go into this is what we have now we go into okay now we start with the curriculum <laughs> No, uh, no. So CP will be a surprise. So any ra any day randomly, I'll say that okay, today we're going to have CP, and then I'll just call people, just like lab. I'll isolate you guys from the group. I'll call people and make them stand here. Yeah, it will be group because we don't want to lose too much time on CP. As I said, I, ideally I wouldn't have had CP, uh, but since it's a requirement, uh, we will have CP. Maybe we'll have four, five sessions, six sessions, whatever. Okay, so it will be randomly any time. I'll just decide one day that is CP. So you have to be <coughs> it's random because uh, you have to. That means you have to be ready at any point of time. Okay, so you guys have to be ready, and anybody can be called. We have even left uh, water today. Okay, all right. So how are we doing on time? This class runs till eleven. Okay, good. So are you feeling that you are? Uh, are you learning anything useful? Nobody is sleeping so far, except for Mayank. Mayank is sleeping. Okay. All right. Okay. So now let's get yeah yeah. Quiet, guys. When somebody asks. Ask, give her the mic. Let's use the mic. When somebody asks a question, everybody should be focused on that. No talking. The other way, I'll write down your names, even though your groups are not ready, and I'll deduct it later. Yes. So, so you said that uh, in intraday, the chart you showed it will help us in intraday trading. Not. That's not exactly what I said. I may have conveyed that impression. This is what I mean. I. The reason that. Uh, the reason that. Uh, the uh, intraday charts intraday charts essentially are stuff that shows you anything below one day okay we'll cover this again but this stuff is called this is the granularity of the chart i'm just giving you a preview we'll discuss all this in detail when you look at charts this stuff is called referred to as the granularity okay so the reason that any kind of uh, intraday uh, chart is important is it helps you to identify okay complete your question So, so I was going to ask that in intraday we buy and sell the same day. Yeah. So, how the charts will help us to analyze that if the price of the company will go up or down in the same day? I mean, it's, it's a very short span of time. Yeah. So, my question is, in intraday we buy and sell the same day. So, how how the chart will help in that case? Okay. So, uh, the the way it will help is essentially, see, you don't have uh, just because you're using intraday charts does not mean that you're not using the other side of the the. Um, opposite almost of intraday is interday as an in inter college meet interday okay interday means any uh, thing daily and higher okay 
So the answer to her question is, her question is how does uh, intraday chart help? But when you use intraday charts, you also use intraday charts. You use all the charts, okay? So when you form the view, you don't form it just based on that. You have a look at this other chart also. Okay, see right now we have the daily chart. So you have daily, you can have weekly as well, okay? Monthly as well. So you do all that if you go here. You do all that. So in this case, I'll just show you. So you just form the view based on the daily chart. The way the intraday helps is, this is where the intraday charts really help you. Because remember, I chose this point as the stop loss. Remember, is everyone clear about everything that's being discussed? So please make sure this is your responsibility. Everything is being handed to you on a platter. There will be a video of the class. Okay, all the course material is given to you. You will pretty much not have to take any notes. Okay, uh, but your responsibility is to listen attentively okay not like how they go is asleep okay uh, to listen attentively and then ask questions as soon as you find that there's something that you haven't understood or any question that has arisen in your mind like the question that she has just asked okay so these are your only two responsibilities listen attentively and ask questions okay so okay so the way that intraday helps is now remember I said this 17 uh, whatever it was I think it was 16, 16, 73, 16, 73 I said, okay. Now, as you notice, 1880 to 1673 is a lot of distance, right? That's a lot of distance. And the minimum trading lot in the US markets is 100 shares. So at the minimum, I would have to risk 1673, uh, 1880 minus 1673 into 100 shares, okay? That's a lot of money to risk, okay? You could have that view. So one of the things that intraday charts help you with is selecting a tighter stop loss that is a stop loss that is closer to your entry point i may decide that wow that's a lot of money to lose i really don't want to do that okay i'm bullish on the stock but i don't want to risk so much money so what i might do then is because see remember in this daily chart i'm not really getting much of a picture about this last part of the movement here right i'm not getting much detail here i just see one straight line one of the things i could do is let's see when this is this is around approximately uh, 4th of June okay so one of the things I could do is let me set up a, a five minute chart how much does that have maybe there's a connection problem should have had yeah okay see it's taking a little long all right so I can't see much here because of this ad let me look at a 15 minute chart all right I think here we should get right now you can see the same that same 1673 that I was showing you on the daily chart now it's a 15 minute chart okay 15 minute chart essentially means that the data is captured every 15 minutes and plotted daily chart means it's captured once a day and plotted so obviously 15 minute chart I'll get more detail I can see greater it's like a zoom in right so 15 minute chart means I'm zooming into that part like the last part here which I was showing you on the daily chart looks like one straight line okay uh, but here when you look at a 15 minute chart if I could do five minutes but it's been covered by the ad here so I just wanted to do 15 minutes okay but can you see here do you see a little bit more detail are you able to see a little bit looks better than just one straight line right looks more uh, so one of the things I could do is uh, and you'll also get a feel for how typically the stops should be selected okay the stop loss level typically these will always be uh, previous highs or lows on the chart okay now I think pretty much everyone in the class will agree that if I choose this point this is a previous low this is a reasonably uh, apparent previous low are you able to follow yes. when you look at charts you'll find that charts always move in this kind of wave action there's a up, da uh, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, like that, right? This kind of wave action, you'll see this everywhere. In fact, I'll show you later that if you look at economic activity, even there, if you look at the unemployment rate, you'll see even that follows this kind of price action. This kind of, uh, that's real data on the economic, uh, on the unemployment rate, and it'll have this kind of pattern, okay? So, therefore, one of the things, the advantages of intraday data, coming to your answer question, is that, um, I could instead of selecting 1673 which is so far away from 1880 I could select this point which is let's say roughly around 1845 okay so now 1880 to 1845 is much shorter right 
so I could also take because I, if I don't want to take that much risk okay so essentially what I'm doing here is by using an intraday chart I'm able to identify another previous low because typically this moves in this high low uh, low high low high this kind of pattern and usually you'll notice that it doesn't get broken if the trend is intact this pattern doesn't get broken so what I'm essentially doing is using that uh, the, using that philosophy and selecting 1845 as a stock which is much closer to 1880 than 1673 is is that right so therefore what it means what this helps me to do is I can reduce my risk on the trade and if I'm really right about the fact that uh, remember why am I buying it right away I'm buying it right away because I believe it's going to just shoot up right away it's not going to come down a little bit also to help me to buy at a lower price it's going to shoot up right away that's why I decide to buy it right away okay are you following Anjum not clear this part why did I buy it right away because I was afraid that it's going to shoot up right away okay otherwise logically I would have, if I felt they would come down a little bit then I would have waited right so if that's true then even this should not be broken that's a reasonable point of view if really if I'm right about the fact that it's going to shoot up right away then there's even 1845 should not be broken that's a reasonable view so I could if I want to reduce my risk I could choose 1845 okay as a stop right and and then go in and so this is one of the utilities of intraday charts that it helps you to set much tighter stops okay that this is called that's again lingo which means uh, market jargon so this is a tighter stop this is a wider stop and this is a tighter stop but so tighter stop means essentially it's closer to the entry point so you lose rest lose rest less money on it is everyone clear so far okay all right so the other point that uh, Sakshi has raised is let's uh, listen to this uh, uh, let's uh, sort of rehash one more concept which is which really doesn't fall into the flow of our notes so we are going to put it into she has used this other term called intraday trading okay okay so how should you you see that intraday trading is something a lot of people like to call themselves day traders a day trader is essentially a guy who engages in intraday trading okay you'll hear this term Okay, so these are all technical, so you should make sure that you understand. Okay, and what is intraday trading? Anybody wants to suggest a definition of intraday trading? A technical definition, very objective definition. It's like, uh, what I mean by objective definition is if you want to identify a student, if you define a student as somebody who is wearing glasses. It's very easy to identify. If, you, if that's your definition of a student anybody not wearing glasses is not a student simple anybody can so there's not it's an objective uh, definition so that's what I mean by an objective definition intraday def, intraday trading anybody wants to come up with an objective definition yes give the mic to Parul let's try and it'll we we'll lose a little time in passing the mic but let's capture it yes my voice is not coming through the mic for whatever reason yeah buying and selling within the same day buying and selling within the same day yeah and then can you refine a little bit more make it even more specific buying and selling shares yeah so if you buy 100 shares okay at the beginning of the day then when you say selling are you going to impose this requirement that the entire 100 shares has to be sold if i buy 100 shares shares and i sell 80 shares yeah okay so uh, does that make me first of all does that make uh, me does that make me a day trader or uh, am i doing intraday trading no. Uh, no. okay so what is the requirement for me to do intraday trading when, uh, i buy the same shares and sell the same shares so if i buy 100 shares how many shares do i have to sell 100 i have to sell the entire 100 shares okay so uh, yes kakrani were you saying the same thing yeah okay so she has come to the right definition so the right definition of intraday trading again notice that it's an objective definition okay that no position at the end of the day you understand what is meant by position position again we'll define and uh, okay it should be end of the day but in this note uh, we are going to avoid we are not going to write grammatically correct english so that we can save some time okay so no position at the end of the day that's the definition of intraday trading okay you buy yeah give him the mic Yeah. So will it be possession or position? No, not possession. 
position you could say no position is it will be position so this is again a technical term of position is actually a commitment to some kind of uh, you know asset price movement we'll define it technically later but position means essentially when you go have if you have let's say uh, if you just open a share trading a, a stock trading account or a, any other kind of trading account and if you just put in let's say uh, you put in a million rupees into your uh, trading account but you have not done anything you just put in the money is lying in your trading account you don't have any position okay so the moment you change the asset mix okay right now your balance sheet essentially if he puts in a million rupees into his trading account and if he has no other assets then his balance sheet is 1 million rupees in cash in the trading account okay and what will be on the liability side yes is my question clear so his balance sheet if he has no other assets he has 1 million rupees in trading in his trading account so asset side will show 1 million rupees in cash and what will be on the liability side capital okay so technically you should say owner's equity okay or equity capital okay so capital can be debt capital also so you should really say either share capital in india we say share capital in the us you would say owner's equity okay uh, or just equity is uh, 1 million rupees okay so that's your situation so the moment the asset mix changes i don't know if you heard this term change in the asset mix so now if he has 1 million rupees in on the asset side okay now if he spend if he invests uh, say 500000 rupees in buying the stock of amazon now if you look at the asset side he has half a million rupees in cash and half a million rupees in stock in amazon stock is this clear so the asset mix has changed the earlier asset mix was 1 million rupees only in cash only cash but now you spent some of your cash in buying a particular type of asset which is the stock the common stock of amazon so your asset mix has changed now you have 50% of your assets is in the common stock of amazon and 50% is in cash this is clear so the moment you change the asset mix essentially you have created a position okay so that would be our technical definition of position any time you change the asset mix from the initial starting position of all cash is this point clear to everybody because remember everything that we go through your responsibility as finance students is that you have to be able to speak in technical terms okay as a finance student you have to be able to speak in technical terms and you should be very clear about all the technical you will notice all of these have technical definitions okay why is an agreement all agreements are not contracts why okay there's a technical reason for that so in a similar way all the things we learn in finance will have technical definitions so you should be very clear about those definitions this is what i find many students in the second year first year are not clear about their definitions so conceptual foundations and when you revise your first year material all of that also your concept should be 100% clear okay all right garvid is indicating this very relaxed now he is indicating that now the class should be uh, completed let's see whether his assessment is correct okay so he's 8 seconds early but we'll let you go all right okay so we are done for today so please remember whatever has been covered today your concept should be 100% clear okay this is your homework for the next day and so on and so forth all right so now please study ahead and try to uh, study ahead on this particular material one sec guys okay guys one sec please you are readings for your readings for the you will find a note here please read ahead so that we can cover the material faster tomorrow in tomorrow's class okay this is the material that you have in your note in your folder so please start reading from the very beginning okay so that we can cover we're going to start with this material from tomorrow okay this is your substantive coursework please select your groups and start identifying your companies the ones you're going to track okay all right okay you're done